Hello again YouTube and welcome back to Just Get A Tesla. Now in this how it works video I'm going to talk you through the touchscreen. This is probably the most controversial thing about the design of a Tesla is everything is run through a screen and I know you're thinking how does it work? Am I going to be distracted while I'm driving? You're not and I'm going to take you through how the touchscreen works, where you can find things and just how intuitive it all is. The screen on a Tesla Model 3 or a Tesla Model Y is likely to be the thing that new owners are the most concerned about. How do I make the car work when everything's just on this big screen? If you're used to using a touchscreen phone or an iPad or a tablet or any of those kind of things, you will have no problem using the screen on a Tesla. The screen is split into two halves. The right hand side is car information. The left hand side is maps and entertainment and other things. The main car controls are on the right hand side of the screen. So from here, you can open all of the things that you need on the car, such as the frunk, the boot, and even the charging flap. And the best thing is you can close those last two from the screen as well. The only thing you can't close from the screen is the frunk because it isn't powered. Once you start driving, the right hand side of the screen shows you a graphical view of the car and also of other vehicles as you're going around it. It shows you your speed in miles per hour up here and then other information such as headlights. So here it's showing that my headlights are on, that my side lights are on, that I haven't got my seatbelt fastened, but I'm not going anywhere. And also H, which is auto hold. So on the brakes, where you push your foot down and hold it on the brake and then release it, and then the brakes stay on until you touch the throttle. On the bottom part of the right-hand screen, there is a sliding panel which shows you different things depending on which of the tiles that you've got. You can have a tile for your music, complete with your music controls, or you can swipe across and it will show you your trip information. So in this case, I've got the current drive and two trip computers A and B, and my overall odometer. You can change the information that goes on here dependent on what you actually want. And then there's also a graphical view of your tire pressures so that you can always check whether they're fully inflated. There are various shortcuts that you can reach on the screen through the press of a few buttons. So to activate your windscreen wipers, press the button on the end of the left hand stock and they come on, but it also pulls up this handy menu. So at the moment, it's set on automatic, but if you'd want to, you can turn them off or you can set them to various different speeds of wiping and it will stick to that. Another shortcut is for headlights. So if you pull the headlight toggle, you get a menu here which shows that you can have everything set on fully automatic. You can put your lights manually on or just your side lights or turn everything off. I almost always leave this on automatic unless... I think I need the headlights on because of the sun is, is shining onto the sensor, which stops it, in which case I'll turn them on manually. When you operate the indicators, the green symbol flashes, but you also see the camera view from that side, showing your blind spot. And this is something that you can move around the screen into whichever position suits you best to be in your line of sight. Across the bottom of the screen, there are shortcuts. So over on the left-hand side, you have got volume and you can literally press and hold and you can drag across and it will change the volume up and down. You have got shortcut buttons. Now you can put whatever you want onto here and pin them. So over on this side I have pinned phone and Spotify and cameras and when I mean cameras I mean literally you press the button and it gives you a view through the rear camera and the two indicator cameras. That's quite useful to have if you're in busy traffic and you want to keep an eye, for example, for motorbikes filtering through traffic to either side of you. On the left hand side, you have got the most recent apps that you've been using. So in this case, we've got theatre, toy box and graphs. And then there's a button in the middle where you pull up your list of apps. So this is like the app drawer basically for Tesla. And then over on the right hand side, you have got temperature. So if you press it, it comes on, you press it again and you get a nice menu of different choices. 
and you can also swipe to change the temperature manually by doing it that way. From here, you can change all of the settings that you want. And what I like about this is the automation. So if I put all of these things onto automatic, what this means is that the car will automatically both heat itself and put the seat heaters on and the steering wheel heaters before I actually get in. So you always come to a nice warm car. This is something you can do via the app. You simply um, go on to climate and press on and it will preheat the car for you before you get in. At the top of the screen, you'll see various different bits of information. So up here, you've got your drive mode. In this case, I'm currently sat in park. You've got a battery indicator showing you your state of charge, which in this case is 48%. Or if you tap on it, it will show you the number of estimated miles that you have, which is in this case, 157. That is based on the WLTP estimate rather than the way you're actually driving. So in day-to-day -day use, I ignore that and have it sat on percentage. If we move across onto the main part of the screen, this shows you a lot of the time the map. It shows you where you are in the world and you can zoom a long, long, long way out and it will still show you where you are. It's also really snappy. I mean, I like the way that you can just zoom this, pinch zoom in and out. You can spin it around, you can do whatever you want to and the computer that's in the car will keep up. You can also press the compass up here and it will reset to where you are. It will change your focus from north up to following dynamically where you're going. There's other information on this main part of the screen as well. Up here, there's a little lock icon. Simply press that to lock and then unlock the car. The time is sat next to the lock indicator, as is the temperature. And then next to it, there's a little symbol showing sentry mode. Now, in this case, I've got sentry mode switched off because I'm parked at home. But if I had it switched on, like I've done now, a red light shows that it is recording. Next to that, you've got your driver profiles and you can touch on that and it will show you all of the different drivers that you've got actually saved on the vehicle. The drivers are set up on your key card or your phone entry so that when you get into the car, it knows that it's you. There's other settings that you can do here. There's a thing called valet mode where you set a pin number and then you can restrict what people you hand a key card over to, such as for valet parking, are able to do. There is also an easy entry mode where it will slide the seat around and make it easier for you to get in and out. And then if you want to just set back onto your own settings, simply press your name and the seat and the mirrors and everything else resets to where you'd want it to get to. Over in the top left hand corner, you can see a symbol for Wi-Fi that's showing that it's connected to my home Wi-Fi and it will also give you uh, your LTE um, phone network if you want to go onto that. So I've turned Wi-Fi off and it is now connected to the car's eSIM card. So if you want premium connectivity, which I've got in this car, you do have to pay for that. It's currently £9.99 a month. I think it's worth it because it gives you this wonderful satellite view map. It gives you live traffic. And of course, it gets you access to all of the streaming services such as Spotify and Netflix. You can tether your own phone to the car and use that as a hotspot, but it's less intuitive. Finishing off the section over here, there is an SOS button, which if you press it, you can literally very quickly make an emergency call or you can review your sentry mode settings or various other things. So that just goes straight into your safety menu and lets you contact somebody if you need to. And then over on the far left hand side, you've got information about the passenger airbag. The map shows you different kinds of information dependent on what you're doing. So here, it's a nice clear screen, but if I tap on it, it will pull up other controls as you can see over here. The most interesting of these is this little charging icon. If I press the charging icon, it will show me all of the superchargers within easy reach of here. And it will show you how many stalls are actually available. So here, Aberdeen has got six stalls. Dundee has got three. It's showing Perth and I assume that's Edinburgh Airport as being busy. Well, the airport one is busy. 
10 minutes wait time it's telling me because it's busy. And then if I go on to the main one, ah, there you go. 15 out of 16 stalls available. So it shows you whether you can charge up easily, how much it will cost you to charge when you get there. You can also change the settings here at the top because at the moment I've got it set on three flashes, which is Tesla superchargers or rapid chargers only. You can go down a level and that will show you different speeds of chargers. So let's zoom back out again. Um, I know, for example, that there are chargers here in Banff because I've been there previously. So I can pull up the information for the Charge Place Scotland uh, chargers. And again, it will give you information on uh, on other network chargers such as that. Again, you can click onto different things on the map and it will not only tell you information about it, but it will route you there as well. So you can literally just tap on a charger. So I want to go to this Instavolt charger here, tap on it, and it very quickly navigates your route there. I think that is a cool feature. Other things that are on here, you can press on the uh, pin and it just resets the map. Up here, you can switch traffic on and off. And then the globe setting is to turn on and off the satellite view if you have it as part of premium connectivity. The last one down here is if you press on the name of the street and it will tell you where you are or the name of the road, that toggles these other parts of the menu on and off. Finally, what you can do if you're not at home, and obviously I am at the moment, so it isn't gonna work, is you can swipe right and it will navigate to home. Or if you're at home, it will navigate to work. So you can set your work address in here and with something as simple as swipe right, it will take you straight to work. Or if you're at work, swipe right and it'll take you straight to home again. So if you want to navigate to somewhere, you can literally just tap on navigate on the map screen and then tap on any location you want and it will route you there. Not only will it route you there, but it will also have a think about how much charge you actually have and it will then route you to a supercharger to make sure that you are going to reach there with enough charge. So if I spin this around a little bit, you can see all of the different stops that you have got. And it's wanting to take me past the superchargers in Aberdeen to put some charge in. Because otherwise, if I go to the bottom here and remove all supercharger stops, it will recalculate and it's going to tell me I do don't have enough charge to reach the destination. In fact, I'm going to get there on minus 18%. So you add the charging stops in and the car automatically calculates where you need to stop and for how long to make sure that you reach your destination and retain some charge. This is an extremely useful function because you simply don't need to think about charging. Your Tesla will do it for you. So when I originally shot this video, I was planning on just going all the way through, just doing one video talking about the screen. But... As I'm actually sat here in the um, office editing it, I've realized it goes on a bit. So what I'm going to do is we're going to cut it right here and I'm going to do actually two more videos about the screen. So this is part one, which talks about the basic layout. In part two, we're going to go through every single one of the menus when you press the car symbol, which change the settings and the way that the car is configured, it drives, all of those other things. And in the third video, we're going to go through all of the apps and the fun stuff like the toy box and the theatre and the games. So don't forget to like and subscribe, hit the bell icon, and I will see you again very soon on Just Get a Tesla.